Hello, welcome to the hot seat. I'm here with Professor Charlie Beckett, Professor in the LSE's Department of Media and Communications and Director of POLIS, which is a journalism think tank here at the LSE. We're here to discuss the future of the BBC. Welcome, Charlie. Hi. So first of all, can you give us an overview of the consultation that's going on at the moment? Yes, what we're seeing at the moment is that uh, the government has negotiated with the BBC on a separate uh, funding deal which means that the BBC is suddenly going to find itself carrying out uh, some social policy for the government. It's going to have to put 700 million of licence fee payers' money into free licence fees uh, for the over 75s. And at the same time, the government did a deal with the BBC that it would be allowed to charge for some of its uh, online on-demand services. So the BBC gets some money back over time. But with the uh, ending of the decriminalisation of non-payment of the licence fee, uh, the BBC is also going to lose another 200 million. So lots of ins and outs, uh, but overall uh, the BBC is going to be in a tight financial situation. But perhaps much more important is the charter renewal process. So uh, by 2016 uh, the BBC will have to negotiate with the government a new deal about its scope, its scale, and what it does. So that is a really important uh, settlement that is now pending. So can you tell us a little bit more about this charter renewal process? The charter renewal process is something that happens on a regular basis and it sets out uh, the BBC's uh, immediate future. Um, but there are no kind of rules and regulations around it. It is in effect a negotiation between an independent uh, corporation and government. And in this situation, uh, there are some really pressing uh, needs, some really pressing questions that are going to have to be addressed. So it's a big, big moment for the BBC. And the BBC is quite a politicised institution. So does the government have a position on it and does the Secretary of State have a position on it that's relevant to that, the political side of this process? Absolutely. Uh, the BBC is an incredibly important institution uh, locally, nationally and of course internationally. So it would be rather strange if the government didn't uh, have a, uh, a point of view about it. And this government, uh, it, we've got a new Secretary of State of course uh, for media including the BBC, it's John Whittingdale, who is incredibly knowledgeable about this because he was the chair of the Select Committee uh, for media. And he does have an, a, a point of view. He has a perspective which is, broadly speaking, pro-market. He thinks the BBC should be smaller, it should do less, it should interfere uh, less, and it needs to be much more efficient. And, of course, that's set against uh, the whole economic policy of this government, which is uh, framed in the idea of a smaller state, but most importantly, framed to try and deal with the deficit. So this government thinks the BBC should take its share uh, of uh, the cuts. So what are the implications for the future of the BBC, public service, broadcasting, media and journalism more widely? And what is the likely sort of medium mix of the market in the future? Well I think you've, you've got to remember that, that we're a background here of the whole media scene changing radically anyway. You know we know all about newspapers being under fire uh, but also broadcasters. There's huge changes in the way that people uh, consume media, the way that they buy it and also the makeup of the market. We've got new digital companies coming in, we've got a much more international media market so uh, for no other reason there's going to be radical changes and in that sense it does make us think again about what is public service media and I think um, one of our responses uh, must be wow we've got this incredible asset uh, built up over decades and decades of an institution that creates outstanding content that is incredibly helpful in people's lives as well as providing uh, entertainment for example so I do not think that there's any threat to that substantial uh, service provision. But I do think that it's going to have to be uh, reconfigured uh, and reimagined. Is there likely to be a threat to the bit status of the BBC as the only public sector broadcaster and the only truly impartial broadcaster in this country at the moment? Well, there are other public service broadcasters. We, you know, ITV and Channel 4 and Channel 5 also produce 
uh, news, for example, which does come under uh, these sort of impartiality regulations. But the BBC, and in a sense this is one of the problems, is by far the most dominant uh, media uh, organisation in Britain, certainly around something like news, for example, because of its reach in terms of local, national, international, online uh, and broadcast. So um, I don't think there's a threat to that. I don't think uh, the BBC is going to either abandon its principles or be so reduced that we're going to lose that. But certainly we uh, have to be aware that there needs to be a healthy ecology of other providers. Uh, and those might not be so impartial. We have an increasingly partisan press. We have uh, a lot of fragmentation uh, online, a lot of a kind of filter bubble effect where we are seeing more and more and more partisan opinionated uh, news and in that sense in terms of journalism uh, I think that the BBC's role if you like as kind of boring but balanced is going to be even more important and we should value that. So is there likely or perhaps possibly the chance of a move towards a more American style partisan media mix in the market? Well we're already moving to a more partisan and more mixed media market um, I think the BBC will retain a very significant role in that. Um, but I don't think the BBC's principles will be uh, compromised. And I do not think that uh, even if the most radical plans went through from the Conservatives, and I suspect inevitably they won't, but even if they did, you would still have a very significant uh, BBC with uh, principles that we would recognise. Now, is there likely to be a change in the role of the BBC? So there's been some suggestions that the BBC could change to be more of a niche provider to fill the holes that the market doesn't cover. Is that something that's likely to happen? And what the implications for the support for it as an institution if it loses that mainstream and entertainment role in favour of a niche provider? Exactly. At the moment, the BBC has a very much a universality principle. If everyone pays the licensee, then everybody should get everything, uh, from soap operas to sport, uh, from music of all kinds. And I think that is being questioned. I think that um, I think that it is, in a sense, a false principle. The idea that because everyone pays, you should get everything. Um, certainly, it should still provide as much of a a range of services it can, but I think it does need to prioritise. And that's an important moment. When you start to prioritise, you decide what you don't do as much as what you do. And inevitably, that will mean value judgments about the, the quality of what you do, for example. And I think that does not necessarily mean that it will become more elitist. And I think it's a long way off ever becoming uh, a niche provider. Um, I think it will always uh, have a mix. But certainly the BBC has to start making decisions. At the moment it's um, guiding um, mission principles, it's public service principles which are now up for discussion in the Charter Renewal process are so broad, so encompassing, that it's very difficult to think of something that the BBC shouldn't do. And I think that's bad for the management of the BBC. I think it's bad for uh, their efforts to improve what they do. So what's your own personal view? and whether the BBC crowds out other commercial providers? I think inevitably, if the BBC wasn't there, then there would be more space for uh, other providers. For example, the BBC Weather uh, could easily be provided by a private company. But I don't think it's um, particularly pressing. Certainly, some people, uh, such as Rupert Murdoch, have a, uh, an ideological uh, prejudiced against the existence of the BBC as public service. Other newspapers are also competitive, but generally speaking, I don't think there is a, a huge demand from the private sector to somehow smash the BBC. Certainly there's a sense that it's got too big uh, and too dominant, and I think that's empirically uh, true. Uh, but again, if you look at something like local newspapers, for example, the BBC has been appalling in the past at giving credit to local papers, when it steals their stories it doesn't link to them. Well it's starting to adjust to that and it's being more supportive of local press. But the local press's problems are not the BBC. It's all about people not buying newspapers, it's about the lack of investment in local journalism. So 
And I think you really have to pause before uh, blaming the BBC for private media's problems. There is huge opportunities for the private sector to actually benefit from the BBC, from the uh, content it generates, from the people it trains, uh, and generally speaking from the kind of audiences that it can create for other people to, to also share. So can you see a trade-off between this crowding out argument and implications for free impartial journalism? I think on journalism, I think that um, the BBC doesn't crowd out other voices. We benefit in Britain from quite a healthy mix compared to most countries of a very partisan, independent press, if you like, and a public service broadcasting uh, system that produces high quality and extensive amounts of journalism which is more balanced and less partisan. So we have quite a healthy ecology. I, I would say probably, especially because of its importance online, uh, that the BBC probably has been too dominant in a time of stress for uh, private uh, media companies. It probably would be a good thing if the BBC was less present. And certainly the BBC has to be much more efficient. But I would like to see, not just in journalism, but across the BBC, that it shifts from being this kind of monolithic institution, uh, separate, if you like, from the rest of the media ecology. It becomes much more of a commissioning, an enabling, and a collaborating body that works not just with other media companies, but with other um, British or in international institutions, perhaps even universities more extensively, uh, to create content, to provide services, in a way that it facilitates rather than necessarily owns. Are there any structural implications for free press, free journalism, or the ability to um, pursue stories without fear or favour of not only the structure of the BB Street, but the structure of the media market more generally? Well, I think there is a, a specific problem about uh, a loss of confidence at the BBC, perhaps particularly in its journalism, that it has sought to address, I think, quite justified claims that there was an institutional liberal bias. The danger of that um, correction, if you like, and the danger of a general lack of confidence and resources, especially at a time when it's under so much pressure politically because of the charter renewal process, is that the BBC's journalism will become less critical, less independent, and uh, in a way less diverse. So I think there's a particular problem with the BBC, um, and certainly we are at a moment of great change in the journalism market in the UK, and we can ill afford to lose strong, trustworthy uh, content providers, if you like. But I don't think that we should be uh, panicking. We still have a pretty healthy uh, news market in this country. We all complain about certain titles that we don't like, uh, but generally speaking, uh, British journalism is in remarkably good health considering the economic problems it faces. But certainly anything that increases diversity, and that might include reducing or changing the role of the BBC, anything that increases diversity has got to be a good thing. Great. Thank you very much, Charlie Beckett. You're off the hot seat.